Welcome to Ferox Technology, and I've been a programmer, a developer, database developer mostly for about 30 years. You know, I'm a book learner. I like to buy huge books, you know, like, like this one over here, and, and basically, you know, read it from cover to cover. You know, a lot of times those big, thick books came with the program. Uh, now, people started using the internet. It's been a joke for a long time that knowing how to use Google effectively has been, you know, one of the best skills a programmer can actually have. But with the rise of chat GPT, people are starting to wonder, how long is it going to be until AI takes over our jobs? Today, I'm going to see how close we are to that reality. I'm going to have it write a simple database in Microsoft Access for this test. We're going to find out if chat GPT is just another tool like a textbook or like Google, or if it's here to actually replace the work that we do. So let me share the test that we've devised for it. Okay, so part one, I've created an Excel spreadsheet with some data from our bookstore database that we've used in the past. Using the book database data file, AI needs to make the database with the following features. First off, we wanted to build a table author, table ISBN, series. They need to have appropriate fields from the columns in the file. They need to load the data from the file into the tables. Then we wanted to write a query called query books using all three tables, a form called form main with a button that opens the query that we just created uh, will also be requested. So part two, how are we going to grade it? I'm going to give the AI reasonable time to complete the tasks. Once we've finished, we'll grade the AI based on the results. I am worried about two issues that might come up though. First, we're asking the chatbot to help with programming. While we're using GPT-4, the most powerful commercially available, it's still primarily a chatbot. It recently got a major update with its code interpreter module, but it still has to read text that I type and respond to it. So there may be some human bot interface issues. Second, AIs tend to hallucinate. When they're at the edge of their knowledge base, hallucination is a term that they use when the AI will wholesale invent things when it's not sure. I've had it invent non-existing functions, uh, assure me that compatibility issues don't exist, and sometimes ignore information that it knows, only to tell me once I prompt it further or figure it out myself that it was actually true. I'll push the AI in the right direction if it starts to hallucinate, but if it gets stuck, that will cost it a grade at the end of the test. All good conversations with AI start with a good prompt. A good prompt puts the AI in the right state of mind, knowing what information that I expect from it. This is what we're going to start with. I'm going to start by putting the database together using the instructions that it provides back to me. Then, after I'm done, I'll check back with you and as we, you know, make progress. Obviously, this prompt starts the process. It'll probably give me instructions to load the data, and that's really all I expect from this first prompt. We'll have to prompt it further when we expect it to write the query and then to write the form, and then we'll just see how it does. All right, so let's get started. I've opened ChatGPT4, and I'm, I'm going to copy from the other screen the prompt that I told you about a little bit earlier, and I'm just going to paste that in here. Okay, so it gave me nine steps to go through. It assumes that I'm going to create some forms, queries, and reports eventually. Um, I'm going to actually prompt it onto how to, how to create the queries. So basically, the first six steps are valid for where we want to take it before we prompt the AI again. And then I'm going to start building the database. I think we need to go back to chat GPT and ask it how to get the data in there because it's not addressing the data. It ignored the fact that I told it there was going to be an Excel file coming. It didn't address that issue at all. So let's go uh, back to ChatGPT and ask it if it's ready for this, the Excel file. 
I'm unable to directly handle files or perform actions outside of this chat interface. However, I can continue to guide you through the process of how to import your Excel file into the database you're setting up. Have any specific questions or need assistance? Feel free to ask. All right. Well, the, what I, you know, obviously I'm a beginner. I have no idea how to get the data in there, right? That's why I'm a beginner. I'm using ChatGPT to help me guide through it. So, okay, does not tell me that I need to create the table first. The other instructions, of course, because it missed the fact that it was going to get an Excel spreadsheet or that the data was in Excel, went straight to telling me how to create the tables, which obviously is a miss on their part. They're risking not getting the A at all because we've already had to prompt it once uh, to correct that, even though I explicitly said we'd load data from an Excel file. So now we've got the instructions to load it from an Excel file. Okay, so I'm going to close this table. It says, uh, and the ribbon at the top, click external data, import and link on group, import and link group, okay. You'll find an Excel button, click on it. I don't see an Excel button here. So there is no Excel button there. Now, I happen to know that if I go to click this down arrow, and go from file, I'm going to find the Excel button here. But this is another miss. So that's two misses so far. The instructions weren't explicit enough to tell me where that Excel button was. So I'll hit Excel and I need to browse where the file is and book database data and open. And I want to import the source data into a new table in the current database. Is that what it told me to do? Uh, asking you to browse for the Excel file and you need to create a new table, append a copy, link, no. Uh, okay. Um, we have another miss here because a new user would be looking for where it says create a new table or append a copy to an existing table or link the data source by creating. Those are instructions for the types of queries, whether they're append queries or make table queries or linking to the data source, which it does have down here, linking to the data source. So create a new table in the current database, import source data into a new table. Yeah, okay, but there's no append here at all. So this append instruction is uh, bogus. And it says over here, click finish to complete. So I'm going to actually hit next because I want to give the table a name. So it got a little bit ahead of itself and left another step out. Just in these instructions, we found three different errors so far. It didn't tell me to hit next one more time to give the table a name. So I'm going to give the table a name, TBL author, and I'm going to finish. And I'm going to close it. And I have a table author. I'm going to repeat this because I've got two more sets of data. All right, now that we've built the database, let's go ahead and give ChatGPT the next prompt, which basically will be take the tables that we've built already, combine them into a query, and we're going to specify which fields that we want. Now, one little twist that we're going to provide here is that the table author has first and last name, and we're going to tell it to develop a field called full name. Now, you and I know that we would concatenate the two fields with the appropriate ampersand and the spaces in between and those type of things in order to make sure that we had first name and last name separated by a space. So we're going to hope to see that explicit level of instruction on creating this particular query so that we can then add it to a form later, which will be the next prompt after we build the query. So let's get started. Okay. 
Okay, we'll call that query books. So I click OK and we have query books over here. Now, the one thing that we did not ask for it to do was to include the author last and author first in the grid. We just asked for the full name as the first field there. So if we if we look at uh, our instructions up here, um, we told it what fields there were, and then we told it author's full name. I don't know that we could be too critical about it, including those two. And when you put the full name in there, I the assumption would be made not to include those, but um, we have our query now. Okay, so let's close that. I think we are ready to go ahead and give it our third prompt, which is to create the form. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and create that. Okay, step three, click on form design to open the blank form. Good. It is in design view on the buttons control controls group. It might be represented an icon under more controls if you're using a different version of access. We told it we were using Office 365. And at this point, I can't see a button control on the ribbon. So technically this is a mess. In form design, are they trying to say in form design view? It, I mean, this is generally the design view here, but the form design, you know, tab is where we need to be or even on, oh, there, there's the controls right there. Okay. Form design tab controls. When I expand it for the full size, the form controls expand like this and they're easy to see. Um, when I have it down here, they put it under a, under an, a down arrow. So, but the, the point here is that it, it at least missed the idea of clicking on the form design tab within the design view. These red ones here all pertain to the design view in the form. And we want, we want miscellaneous operations and we want to run a query. Now, did it tell me I needed miscellaneous? To configure the button action, in the wizard, choose form operations. Beep. Nope. Error, error. Okay, so we know that's not correct because it's down under here miscellaneous. If I wanted to go to, to form operations, all I can do is open or close a form, print a form, print current form, refresh the data. The form data has nothing to do with queries. In fact, nothing on here has anything to do with queries. They stuff it under miscellaneous. You just have to know where it's that. Now, if I were just a beginner, I'd say, uh, I'm stuck unless they knew just to, to poke around for a while. Oh, here I can open a query if they poked around down under miscellaneous. Okay, so does it work? Well, let's save it first. FRM books and okay. And I wanna view it and click and it runs way cool. All right, well, well, we, we've been through the test that we said we were gonna do. Okay, we got all the way to loading the data. We got, the, we got to building the query. We then built a form that could run the query. We saw a few issues along the way. It was interesting that uh, it couldn't find where in the wizard you could put a run query under a button so that would be a miss there. We wanted to build three tables. We want to write query. We want to build a form. And so the grading, obviously part A. Did, should we give it an A? No, I don't think so. It did not need no help. Definitely needed more help than nothing. B, complete with some oversight. A computer savvy non-developer could do it. Uh, no, we had to prompt it. So we did get a completion, but it needed significant help is where I would feel uh, the best grade would be. I'd give it a C. It definitely completed all the features with a little prompting, and it definitely was not in the area of not complete any features, but I would say it needed significant help yet. So at this point, I would say that your jobs are secure, at least for a few more versions of, of ChatGPT.
and definitely until they finally get a version that actually gets into the interface and actually builds it for you. Uh, you're still going to have that human interface. The AI may, in fact, be good resource. I've been using it for a resource to solve coding, coding problems for a fair amount of time now. And in doing so, I've gotten some good, insightful answers. Like I said, I've gotten some bogus answers by in inventing their own uh, functions that, of course, didn't exist. I had one situation where the way I wanted to do it seemed to be the right way, but I wanted to confirm it, and it said you couldn't do it that way. And then ultimately, after going back and forth with chat GPT, it settled on the way that I wanted to do it in the first place and just wasted my time. So no, ChatGPT has a long way to go when they're talking about programming at this point. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And frankly, it's been a great, great run. And I appreciate your time. So hit that like button if you got some value out of this and subscribe to the channel. We've got almost 300 other great videos that uh, give you good knowledge about how to program and access just like we did. So hope to see you again later. Thanks.